tell people, oh, today I'm going to make British food. And they're like, so what is British food? <laughs> I've always wanted to make Aliyah. I think even from my first trip as a 10-year-old, I always wanted to live in Israel. First of all, it's a scone. It's not a scone. Some people think it rhymes with cone. It rhymes with gone. Okay? <laughs> We've been here almost 12 years. I made Aliyah from Manchester in England. Here I've got some self-raising flour, where I was a, a home economics teacher in school. I taught cooking. We've also got the baking powder. One of the first lessons I ever do with them is how to make scones. When you buy flour in the stores, it's been sitting on those shelves and in that bag for quite a while, and it just needs sort of uh, waking up. It's very simple. There's only a few ingredients, and most people can manage to to get it. We're going to take our butter, in it goes. And I went to study, met my husband, we got married, and then I thought, oh, now's the time. Well, come now. The palms of your hands are quite warm, and we want everything to stay nice and cool. Your fingertips are quite cool. It's literally a matter of rubbing the butter into the flour. Then the children come along and they go into the school system. So somebody recently asked me, oh, could I do this with margarine? Absolutely not. <laughs> it was coming up to my elder daughter's 12th birthday and I thought, if we don't come now, it really will be the uh, now or never. So we're getting to that breadcrumb stage here. You can see we haven't got any lumps of butter left. We bought a 12 year old and twins of 10 which is not easy ages. Great. And they did amazingly. Just to check if you've got any lumps left, give it a bit of a shake and they'll, they'll rise to the top and we'll just get rid of those. Since we've been in Israel, we, uh, we've had our Sabra, so she's our fluent Hebrew speaker for us. People think you need fresh milk for scones. In fact, it's even better if the milk is a couple of days old. And to give it that acidic taste, we give it a little squeeze of lemon. Love the food That's in Israel. That's why we all move here, right? Right, <laughs> who doesn't? In with our sugar. Two tablespoons, give that a little stir around. You can use any dried fruit. I'm a purist, <laughs> I'm using raisins. Even in the last 12 years since I've been here, the ingredients that I used to miss have slowly, slowly seeped into Israeli right. supermarkets. At this point, we can slowly add the milk. And you want this to form a nice, pliable dough. At one point when I came, if I wanted to make sushi, I had to go to a specialist shop. Now every supermarket carries sushi rice, nori, once it starts holding together, uh -huh. then you can go in with your hands. That feels lovely and soft. I think when people think about British food, the first thing that comes in their head is fish and chips. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little bit of flour down on the table and we're ready to roll. Interestingly enough, fish and chips has been knocked off the top slot of uh, number one foods in England. I think this is where people make mistakes, uh -huh. is they say, oh, my scones didn't rise. Well, if you're gonna roll it out to the thickness of this, you know, they're not gonna rise. <laughs> and the number one food in England, believe it or not, is now curry. I say about two centimeters. And you want a really firm punch. Ooh. Beautiful. <laughs> and these are ready to go on the tray. I'm going to brush them with just what's left over of that milk. The Israeli strawberries are absolutely incredible, full of flavour. I'd been teaching cooking for over 15 years. I thought I had my recipes to a tea. Once they're chopped into the pan, in go two spoons of sugar. When I got here, Suddenly the flour was different, the butter was different, even the water was different. This is my little twist on the British uh, theme. We're using balsamic vinegar, which really brings out the flavour of the strawberries. When I made halot the first time, I took them out of the oven and there were these sort of flat looking <laughs> like, buns. Yes. <laughs> that sugar's going to melt. 
and the juice is going to come out of the strawberries and we're going to make our delicious balsamic strawberry jam. And I had to learn that things were in season in quite a different way to how it was in England. If you look at store-bought jam, on the ingredients on the back, there'll be maybe 15 ingredients. Right. There'll be a gelling agent, there'll be a glazing agent, there'll be pectin to set it. The best thing about the ingredients here is the fresh produce. We're doing the quick way, the easy way, and the healthy way. So strawberries was always a summer food in England. Right. And in Israel, I had to get used to it being winter. While the strawberries are still holding their shape, you can turn it off. It's just a matter of pouring it in. There's also a fabulous recipe that I used which had watermelon and strawberries. Well, those just don't really come out at the same time no. here. <laughs> it's like one one year or, or the other. <laughs> and as that cools, that sauce is going to thicken up and be nice and rich and sweet. Oh, these smell delicious. I'm going to show you how to make the perfect cup of tea. Since I moved here, I teach adults now. The important thing is boiling water, and I'm just going to warm the pot. Men's class who have never been in the kitchen before to some really quite experienced cooks. So men. Uh. <laughs> Swirl that round a little, tip it out, in with two English tea bags, in with the boiling water. My latest sort of niche that I got into is um, teaching people who have special needs. So somebody who maybe struggles learning to read and write can cook as beautifully as, uh, as anyone else and it's a real confidence booster. Now we can go and take our nap, right? <laughs> nap time. <laughs> people think it's a caricature of Brits to be drinking tea all the time. In my house, it's actually true. Come here. Hey boy. No cups in a real pot. Whoa! Ooh, what is? There's a whole machloket of what goes in first. <laughs> <laughs> is it the milk or is it the tea? You like that little rubby? It's the milk that goes in first. You would say that. <laughs> <laughs> the other way of the regular. They say that the first consignment of fine bone china came to Britain and it was so very, very fine that if they didn't put the splash of cold milk in first, the cup would shatter. I'm revived. So am I. <laughs> <laughs> so the scones that we did came out looking delicious. There's a couple of things to, to remember. Know about these also. Of okay. course. <laughs> we have to split it horizontally. Uh -huh. And the question is what goes on first? Is it the jam or is it the cream? We had some American visitors that came to our house for afternoon tea. I'm doing it the way the Queen does it. The son took a scone, he cut it vertically, so okay. I'm going to go for the jam and ask me for Nutella, a big blob of whipped cream. I, I had to ask him to leave. So I would think you guys are, would eat with a fork and a knife, right? Not, not with this, oh. no. No, no, you can <laughs> go, 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 go right in, go right in. No whipped cream on our mouth, says it all. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely.